Hello folks. So today I want to do something different. I want to show you the two greatest astro photos ever taken, at least in my opinion. Now I, I could have done a, a top 10 list, but really there are so many great photos out there. Um, three through eight probably would have been a tie, but there's two photos I think stand above the rest. And uh, let's hop on my computer and take a look. Okay, so this first photo I want to show you is pretty old. In fact, it dates back to 1880, and it's considered the first photo ever captured of the Orion Nebula. And if you look, you can kind of make out its core. But what amazes me when I come back to look at this photo is that it's a 51-minute exposure captured by Henry Draper. And you have to consider he had no auto guider. He had no electrical motor to control his telescope. This is done by hand, and look how good the stars look after 51 minutes. That's not that bad. I can consider, if I were trying to capture this for 51 minutes, using a telescope by hand, my stars would probably be one inch long. So I got to give uh, uh, Mr. Draper some credit. He did a really good job on that. And if you look at his second attempt on the Orion Nebula two years later, that uh, is even more impressive. This is a 137 minute exposure under the same circumstances. And it definitely looks a, a, a lot more like the Orion Nebula that we all know. You can see a, a lot more of the gassy clouds were picked up. And this is the man himself. That's Henry Draper and that's the telescope he was using. That's the camera and it looks like he was controlling his telescope using ropes here. Now, unfortunately, um, um, Henry Draper died um, not long after taking this photo in 1882. He was only 45 years old, so who knows what he would have went on to accomplish after this. Maybe he would have discovered the Horsehead Nebula, not far from the Orion Nebula. You never know, but hey, you're on YouTube now, Henry, so congratulations. Um, everyone knows you now, at least anyone who, who watches my YouTube channel. All right, let's move on to the next picture now. Okay, so this is the next photo, and this is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field photo. And it's the second time they used the Hubble Space Telescope to do this kind of picture. And what they did is they pointed the telescope at a blank patch of sky starting in September of 2003 up till January of 2004. And the, the area of sky they were capturing was about 2.4 to 3.4 arc minutes. That's about the size of the Ring Nebula, to put that in perspective. And what they captured in this blank patch of sky was actually around 10,000 of the most distant galaxies ever captured. It's estimated these galaxies date back to around 13 billion light years. And if, if you think about the age of the universe being around 13.7 uh, billion years old, this is only around 700 or 800 million years after the Big Bang. And I, I think uh, this is about as far back in time as I think we've ever seen. And it, it boggles my mind that the light we're seeing is that old. And um, what I'm wondering now, if, if this is the, the, the picture that always makes me think, if we could actually see this picture as it exists now, instead of the light that we're seeing some 13 billion years ago, what would it look like now? Would there be any galaxies visible in this picture? Would the expanding universe have spread everything out so much that we only see a few galaxies instead of the 10,000 we can see in this picture. And see, that, that's what makes me think, or if we could have seen even farther back in time, would we see our own galaxy? Would we be looking at the back of our head? <laughs> Go full cycle. I don't know. That, these, these are the weird questions I think of. And, and another thing is if you look at these galaxies, and if you consider that light travels in our galaxy from one end to the other, it takes around maybe a hundred thousand years to reach one edge to the other. 
picture all of these galaxies as a bunch of Milky Ways, how long it would take light to travel from one end of the picture to the other end. It, it's, to me, this is the very de definition of infinity. It just, to me, goes on forever and ever. Um, so this is, this is the picture that makes me ponder and think deep every time I see it. So um, anyway, I, I, these are the, my two favorite pictures anyway, from Henry Draper and the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. And uh, now let me just show you a couple of things I'm working on. So if you saw my live session on the Sunflower Galaxy a few days ago, I captured around three more hours on this galaxy that night. So now I'm up to seven and a half hours on the Sunflower. And I've done a little processing, but it's starting to take shape. I don't mind how it's looking so far. And the other object I'm working on, I just started it the other night, is the Triffid Nebula. Now, I I don't really have any good pictures of the Triffid. I, I once tried it long ago with my DSLR when I was first starting out, but that data is no good, so I want to get a better picture. And this is, it's 30 minutes so far, but this is a, it's a low object, probably uh, around at its highest, 25 degrees high in the south. So it's not an easy object for me to capture, but I like how it's looking after only 30 minutes. So those are the only two projects I'm working on. Uh, we might have clear skies tomorrow, I'm hoping, because I think it's going to take me a while to finish these, especially the Triffid, because it's only probably uh, visible for about an hour a night for me. So it's going to take me a long time to finish. But luckily, I'm getting a head start on it. I, it does, it's not even visible until 3.30 a.m. So it'll be around for a while for me to finish up. All right, that's all I got, folks. Thanks for listening, and I will see you later.